As a truck driver, one of your biggest responsibilities is to make sure your vehicle is safe before it leaves the yard. The consequences of not doing a proper inspection may be fines, being put out of service, or worse. Other people's lives depend on your vehicle being safe out on the road. A thorough inspection, which begins before operating any vehicle, continues en route, and finishes with completion of the required written post-trip report, will increase highway safety. Just because the vehicle was in safe condition in the morning does not mean that it will be in the afternoon. Even overnight, while the vehicle is parked, tires can go flat, hoses can leak, and lamps may become defective. The vehicle inspection should be ongoing. Using your senses, listen for irregular sounds, smell for unusual odors, feel changes in the vehicle's response to the road, and observe all gauges, parts of the vehicle, and cargo security. To assist you in performing a safe, effective, and systematic vehicle inspection, the Michigan Center for Truck Safety and Two Men in a Truck International have created this instructional video. The inspection begins with the driver approaching the vehicle, looking for leaking fluids and checking whether the vehicle is leaning, indicating possible defects such as weak or broken suspension or a flat tire. The driver also must make sure the parking brake is set and be aware of his surroundings. Continue your inspection under the hood on the right side. Inspect any visible engine belts for snugness, making sure there is no more than three quarters of an inch of play at the center of the belt. Also look for cracks or frays. You will need to see that the air conditioner and alternator are secured to the engine and are not damaged, leaking, or missing parts. Also, check any other components on this side. Then, inspect the steering linkage to see that joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. If the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, such as coil springs, check that they are not shifted, bent, or damaged, and are mounted securely. See that the shock absorber is secure and not damaged or leaking. Inspect the brake hose and lines. Look for cracks, wear, or leaks. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes or pads, is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil, and brake fluid. Check the tire for no less than 430 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that the tread is evenly worn and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage to the tire. The valve stem should be equipped with a cap to prevent damage. Also, check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is recommended. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Check that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not elongated and that there are no cracks or distortions in the rim and mounting. See that the hub and wheel axle seals are not leaking, and if the hub cap has a sight glass or plug, check that the oil level is adequate. Continuing on the left side of the engine compartment, locate the radiator sight glass or coolant recovery reservoir. Check for the proper fluid level. Next, find the dipstick and look to see that the oil level is within safe operating range. Then check that none of the hoses are leaking, loose, or worn and that they are not rubbing or chafing. Make sure that they are secured and look for dripping fluids in the engine compartment on the underside of the engine and transmission. Also check the windshield washer fluid level. Inspect all visible engine belts on this side of the vehicle. Also look for cracks or damage to the fan assembly. Continue checking that all engine components are secured to the engine and are not damaged, leaking, or missing parts. See that the power steering fluid reservoir is mounted securely. Check for an adequate fluid level. Also ensure that all hoses are secure and not leaking. Inspect the steering system, beginning with the steering shaft. Check that the connections are not worn or loose. Next, see that the steering gearbox is securely mounted and that the pitman arm is not worn or loose. Then look at the ball and socket joints to make sure there is no movement other than rotational. Check any other steering components for wear or missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys.
Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. See that the shock absorber is secure and not damaged or leaking. Inspect the brake hose and lines for cracks, wear, or leaks. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes, or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil, and brake fluid. Check the tire for no less than 4 30 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that the tread is evenly worn and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage to the tire. The valve stem should be equipped with a cap to prevent damage. Also, check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is recommended. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Then ensure that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not cracked or elongated. Inspect for cracks or distortions in wheel and axle mounting. See that the hub and wheel axle seals are not leaking and, if the hub cap has a sight glass, that the oil level is adequate. When you get in the cab, make sure that the parking brake is set and will hold the vehicle. Otherwise, wheel chocks must be used. Make sure the transmission is in neutral and start the engine. Ensure that the oil pressure reaches the manufacturer's recommended operating level. Then check that all other gauges are working. In addition, make sure that all required paperwork is present. The mirrors should be clean and adjusted properly when viewed from the inside. The windshield should be clean and not have any obstructions, damage to the glass or decals, except those that are authorized. Any authorized stickers must be clear of the area swept by the wiper. Check the windshield wipers and washer system, as well as the heater and defroster. Make sure you have spare electrical fuses, proper warning devices, and a properly secured, charged, and rated fire extinguisher. Look for excessive free play on the steering wheel by rotating it clockwise and counterclockwise. See the manufacturer's recommended standards for free play movement. Check that the left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way emergency flashers, and high beam headlight indicator lights work. Check that the horn is working uh. properly. Make sure that the seat belt is securely mounted, not damaged, and that it locks and adjusts properly. With the engine running, pump the brake pedal three times. Then hold the pedal down for five seconds. The brake pedal should not move or depress. Check that the warning buzzer or light is off. If the vehicle is equipped with hydraulic brake reserves or a backup system, with the key off, depress the brake pedal and listen for the sound of the reserve system electric motor. Turn on clearance lights, headlights, and tail lights, and exit the cab to continue the walk around. As you close the hood, check for any new fluid leaks and that all engine components are secure. On an enclosed box or body, check the front area for signs of damage, such as cracks, bulges, or holes. Also, make sure that the clearance lights, ID lights, and headlights are working, and that the hood and front bumper do not have any damage or missing components. Continuing on the left side, start with the doors and mirrors. Check that the doors are not damaged, that they open and close properly from the outside, and that the door locks work. The hinges should be secure with seals intact. See that mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. Make sure that the fuel tank is secure, undamaged, and that there are no leaks from tanks or lines. Also, check the amount of fuel in the tank, and then make sure that the cap is tight. As you move along the vehicle, look for cracks, broken welds, or other damage to the body and frame. It is recommended to cross-check these components. Check the exhaust system for damage such as cracks, holes, or signs of leaks such as rust or carbon soot. Continue to check the frame and body as you move along the vehicle. Look to see that the drive shaft is not bent or cracked, and that the safety loops are not bent or damaged and are mounted securely. Universal joints should be secured, free of foreign objects, and not worn. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. If the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, such as airbags, 
see that they are not shifted, damaged, or leaking, and that they are mounted securely. If equipped, check that the shock absorber is secure and is not damaged or leaking. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil and brake fluid. Inspect the brake hose and lines looking for cracks, wear or leaks. Moving to the tires, check for no less than 230 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that there are no foreign objects lodged between the tires, that the tread is evenly worn, and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage. The valve stems should be equipped with caps to prevent damage. Also, look for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge. Check your company policy regarding tire inflation checks. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Check that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not cracked or elongated. Check the axle seal to ensure that it is not leaking. If they are required, inspect the splash guards to see that they are not damaged, are mounted securely, and the proper length. Check that all doors are not damaged. Also, see that door ties, cargo straps, chains, binders, and cargo tie-down points are secure and not damaged, and that lift gates and ramps are working and stored properly. Check for proper color and location of all external lights and reflectors, and for a valid registration plate. See that they are all mounted securely, clean, undamaged, and working properly. Check the required rear-end protection to see that it is not cracked, loose, or missing. Continuing up the right side of the vehicle toward the front, check all of the same components as you did on the left. If it is not under the hood, ensure that the battery box cover or door is not damaged and is secure. Once you have reached the front of the vehicle, turn off the running lights, clearance lights, and ID lights. Activate the brake lights, turn on the emergency flashers and the high beam headlights, then get out and check the front and rear of the unit. Turn off all of the lights and check the turn signals. Lastly, fill out the proper paperwork. Part 396.11 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations requires that drivers complete a written post-trip inspection report at the end of each shift or day for all commercial motor vehicles they have operated. But before you perform an inspection, make sure you know your company's inspection policies. The purpose of vehicle inspections is not just to meet federal and state requirements. They are intended to ensure that your vehicle is in safe operating condition, protecting both you and other motorists. The reward of doing thorough and regular inspections is safer roadways for everyone. Let's share the road.